Now hold on, there's still one last chance to impress me. What's your last ditch effort? A ride simply called Dinosaur. Yeah, that's creative. To be fair, it was originally called Countdown to Extinction, but it was rebranded to become a tie-in with that movie that nobody saw. You enter the Dino Institute, and first you wait by museum exhibits about dinosaurs narrated by Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, 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 Bill. Then you watch a video orientation where Dr. Claire Huxtable here talks about sending you back in time to visit some dinos. That the future is truly in the past. <laughs> And this from a theme park that can't leave a classic alone. Oh ho ho, but then the orientation is interrupted by the young, brash, wacky Dr. That One Guy from the Larry Sanders Show. Phil, you know, uh, I've got this... Ulcer? Uh, party. Oh! <laughs> okay, yeah, he's on some other show too, but who cares about that? This guy wants to bring a dinosaur back to the present for research. Because, you know, taking a creature out of not only its natural habitat, but also its natural century can't possibly go wrong. Right now, our dino should be about here, at the very end of the Cretaceous period. Uh, no. Right now, our dinosaur has been dead for millions of years. During the end of the Cretaceous period, he was at the end of the Cretaceous period. Time and space are different things. You're just not thinking fourth dimensionally. Right, right. I have a real problem with that. If we can find him at this point in time, we can probably find him at an earlier point in time as well. So why do you need to take us to this particular point in time? That is impossibly close to the giant asteroid impact that destroyed most life forms on Earth. Oh, right, because the plot demands a ticking clock. Flash photography? I wouldn't. No, but you'd endanger tourist lives just because you wouldn't bother to find out where the dinosaur was an hour earlier. After wondering why these clowns don't get their funding pulled, you board your time rovers and the ride begins. I would say it's Disneyland's Indiana Jones ride crossed with Universal's Jurassic Park River ride. But, no, it's just the Indiana Jones ride with dinosaurs. Same cars, same basic layout, same effects, the only difference is that it has dinosaurs and it's pitch black. And while it's not a bad ride, certainly the best Dinoland has to offer, it still doesn't reach the perfection of its Indiana Jones counterpart because you can't see a damn thing. The Indiana Jones ride is great for many reasons, but one of the biggest is, of course, the atmosphere. You really feel like you've been pulled into an adventure from one of the movies as you see the temple around you. Seeing a couple of dinosaurs is cool, and there are some great moments like the dinosaur that follows your car, but there's not nearly the same scale here. Still, it is the second best ride in Animal Kingdom right after Everest, but that's not saying much considering the number and quality of rides in the park. 